Hey everybody, what's going on? Baru here, and today I have some more Borderlands, the pre-sequel news for you guys. And this is actually going to be going over Wilhelm's Hunter Killer and Dreadnought skill trees. Yes, this is going to be the skill trees for Wolf and Saint. More on Wolf than Saint because we are pulling from uh, we are pulling from the E3 gameplay, so. Unfortunately, we don't have everything, but let's just go ahead and get into the skill tree. So the first skill tree that we're going to be looking at is going to be Wolves. And the very first skill is going to be Fire Support. Now this is just going to be a basic a basic skill for Wolf. It's going to be increasing uh, weapon damage as well as damage of Wolf himself. Overall, it's a, it's a pretty nice standard buff. Not really much to sort of uh, say on this, although the damage buff on Wolf is pretty significant. Um, especially when we combine that with a couple of other skills that we'll get to take a look at uh, later down the skill tree. But uh, pr pretty standard weapon damage buff. Let's go ahead and move on to the next skill over here, uh, which is going to be Venom Bolts. Now, this one is going to be buffing Wolf again, and it's going to give Wolf a percent chance uh, to fire off these sort of corrosion uh, missiles at the enemies. Now, I don't know what exactly that's going to end up doing, if it's going to be doing any sort of extra damage. Uh, it, says, it does say that it will corrode the enemies, and it does add a passive bonus to Wilhelm himself. Uh, he will now be able to have a higher chance to deal corrosion damage, as well as the actual dot uh, dealing more damage, which is kind of interesting. I, I think this is the first actual player skill we've seen where dot damage... Actually, no, I think Gage also had something, but... Uh, uh, dot damage being increased by a skill so hopefully this leads me to believe that maybe they've balanced uh, dot damage this time around and it'll be a little bit better and we might actually see more armored targets this time um, giving giving corrosive a more prominent element uh, or sorry a more prominent role in the elements because as we know in Borderlands 2 almost 80% of the enemies were all flesh-based and fire was the dominant element so I really would like to see corrosive have a bigger role to play in the pre-sequel but uh, I don't know how exactly this skill is gonna work out with dot damage but anyway let's go ahead and move on to our next skill here which is gonna be suppression now suppression is basically metal storm from Axton it's a kill skill that will increase our rate of fire and if we notice it also increases wolf's rate of fire by a pretty significant amount, 25% per level is going to be absolutely insane uh, for for Wilhelm. It's like I just can't imagine Wolf firing that fast. And if there's a comp for it, it's going to be even more crazy. Especially when you combine that um, with the next skill that I'm about to show you, which is going to really help Wolf in that damage department. And we'll go off and we'll go over that in just a second, but. Um, the rate of fire passively for Wilhelm really isn't that great. 4% is not much of a game changer, but it, 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 is, it does help Wolf, and overall, it's a, it looks like a good skill to have. I really don't know about Venom Bolt, so uh, this might be the go-to skill, but we'll end up seeing how that all plays out. But anyway, I want to go ahead and talk about this next skill right here, uh, which, is gonna be, which is really going to change up the way Wilhelm uh, plays throughout the battlefield and that's gonna be laser guided now what happens is when after you um, when you when we activate Wolf and Saint we can press LB again and we can tell them to attack a specific target this is awesome because it, it it's great to have an AI on the field in addition being able to tell that AI where you want to attack who you want to attack when you want to attack and it's gonna be Perfect. It would have been, it would have been a lot better if Axton had had this type of skill, especially considering he had the, you know, he had the devices necessary, lore-wise. But I guess they just couldn't make it happen mechanics-wise. But anyway, um, whenever you kill a painted target, they're going to increase the duration of the surveyors. In addition, painted targets will take 33% more damage. Now, um, the way this is worded. Most skills, because of the uh, we, we've worked with Borderlands 2 and its damage pipe before, most skills, when it says just a flat increase in damage, does mean multiplicative damage, which means it's going to take more damage from grenades, uh, guns, melee, 
dots everything so a painted target is basically going to be like uh, a baby death mark if you will Wilhelm can just send send them off to a target and he can just say go attack that that's going to take more damage which is going to be a great solo and team buff but uh, overall I'm definitely looking forward to this skill and let's just go ahead and keep moving down his skill tree here so the next skill in Wolf's Tree is going to be called Kill Switch, which uh, whenever you recall it or it uh, or Wolf runs out of health, it will end up doing an explosive effect upon its death or recall. Um, this is going to be sort of a, a a set damage skill, so I don't know how well its scaling is going to work throughout the levels. Hopefully, it doesn't end up being terrible, but. Nothing we can really say about that. We don't know the blast radius or anything like that. So let's go ahead and just keep moving down the skill tree. But again, hoping they've got the scaling down for that skill. Otherwise, it's going to end up like Axon's nuke. And we already know what that does. All right, so now for the next uh, skill, we have Rolling Thunder. And I think this is going to be one of Wolf's most powerful abilities if used correctly uh, with, uh, with Laser Guided. Now, what this does is, is that... For every five seconds that Wolf is active, his damage will increase by 15%, or as it shows there in the tooltip, obviously if we put more points in, it's going to get more damage, but for every five seconds that Wolf is active, um, it's going to get this increase in damage. So if you combine that with Laser Guided, which increases uh, the Wolf's duration by five seconds, you're going to be able to stack Wolf's damage very high very quickly and depending on mo uh, mob density uh, in the areas you, you're gonna be able to get wolf to just get to the point where he's just one-shotting everything hopefully hopefully we get to get to that point of being power of, of overpower but uh, I'd like to see how this works out I don't know if there's gonna be a cap on it it may end up being like um, like death traps ability where every time he gets a kill he gets more melee damage but this is just gonna be raw damage which is going to be really nice for him and it's it goes based off time that it's alive rather than just kills so uh, it'll be interesting to see how this works out but let's go ahead and move on through the skill tree here and next up we have an ability called scramble it's pretty uh it's pretty straightforward on what this is whenever uh, whenever Wolf dies, you get a free redeploy. So I don't know if this is going to remove all of its Rolling Thunder stacks. I would, I would hazard to guess that it will, but um, not really sure uh, if it's going to do that or not. But really, not much to say about this other than a free redeploy is always good. I don't know if there's going to be a calm in it where we can uh, basically get a f a full refill on the timer, but. Uh, yeah, not, not much to say. So anyway, let's just go ahead and move. Let's keep moving down the skill tree here. So next up, we have a very interesting ability, which is called Cold War. When you apply a shock, incendiary, or corrosive status effect to an enemy, there's a chance that Wilhelm will actually, in addition to that uh, status effect, will freeze them, as well as giving freeze a higher chance in general to proc. Uh, from having no skill points in it, it looks like it's going to be about 6% chance for freeze to proc and a 2% chance for uh, the element, the extra incendiary corrosive dots to also apply this freeze, which I think this is a perfect way to implement ice on this kind of character because that way he doesn't have to keep swapping those weapons. Just by using a fire, he'll be able to freeze set them on fire or you know use corrode in the same in the same aspect and if they had done this type of thing with slag i don't think there would have been that much of an issue uh with certain classes if they had this type of ability so i'm really looking forward to maxing out this kind of skill being able to get that increased damage from frozen targets and uh while not having to worry about swapping back and forth between items so anyway Let's go ahead and move on to the last skill of this tree because unfortunately the gameplay did not show uh, the capstone. But anyway, to the last skill we have Escalation. Now Escalation is basically going to be like Get Some for those who are familiar with Salvador in that uh, doing critical hit damage will reduce the cooldown of Wolf and Saint while they are uh, not active. 
from the tooltip, it says that it's, it's, this ability is not going to work while they're up and around, so you're not going to have the same thing like Get Some where you just have permanent action skill forever, which I kind of like. That way, uh, the action skill doesn't really lose its value because you have it forever. So, really nice skill here. Um, I don't know if specking into it more will reduce that cooldown because there is a 15 second cooldown uh, between procs. So I don't know if maybe you can put a comm into it and maybe remove that cooldown or what's the situation with that because they didn't actually end up specking into this uh, during the gameplay. So yeah. Anyway, uh, this is pretty much going to wrap it up for Wolf Skill Tree and we're only going to be able to take a partial look at Saint Skill Tree, but the skills that we do get to look at are pretty awesome. So let's go ahead and jump into the first skill here. So starting off with Saint Skill Tree, the first skill that we have to look at is going to be called Energize. Now what Energize does is that it works similar to Death Trap's Buck Up for those who are familiar um, with Borderlands 2 and Death Trap. And he's going to go around and restore the shields of you and your allies, as well as gaining a passive to increase uh, the healing rate that he gives to Wilhelm. Because as you know, when Saint is out, he's giving some passive healing to Wilhelm, buffering his health. And this will help uh, Wilhelm stay alive while Saint is active, which is really nice. The only issue that I have with this skill is that uh, if Athena ends up do... Uh, ends up do... I'm sorry, my words today, ends up having a a sort of melee based tree. She's going to want to use Roid, and as you know, you're not going to want Roid to regenerate. So I don't know if Saint is going to be extremely annoying with that, like uh, Death Trap was, and restoring a, say, like a melee zero's shield. So hopefully, there's, hopefully Saint's a little smart and maybe won't go after characters with Roid. That would be preferable, but I highly doubt it. But anyway. Moving on to our next skill here, we have an extremely interesting skill called Termination Protocols. Now what Termi Termination Protocols does is that it allows you to walk while you're in fight for your life. You no longer take a knee, but instead you walk around. I don't know if this is actually means you're going to be able to aim down sights while in fight for your life, but if you can, Holy shit, this skill is going to be overpowered as hell. In addition, you're going to start doing a shock pulse to everything around you while you're in fight for your life. And if you do end up dying, you do a nuclear explosion when you die. This skill just sounds all sorts of awesome. I don't even know how to explain it. The simple fact that I can actually walk instead of doing like this slow ass crawl just sounds amazing which is going I, I i want this skill i'm gonna try and make sure that this thing ends up ha uh, being in all of my builds assuming i might be able to aim down sights while in fight for my life that just might be a a hopeful wish or anyway but uh going go ahead and moving over to the next skill in the tree here so for our next ability, we have Zero Hour. Now this is gonna work pretty much, it looks like it's gonna work exactly like Wolf's ability, where if he dies, he explodes for damage, but this time, um, when Saint is either recalled or killed, it will drop a healing um, zone around it, and it will heal everyone inside. And this is why I think that we might not actually see, we might not actually see Moxie weapons make a return in the pre-sequel, because Every single class so far seems to have a very easy way of sustaining itself. When Saint is up, it's got that constant healing, and when Saint dies, you've got this healing zone, and then you use um, Escalation to get your Saint back in just a couple of seconds. It's going to be a very... It, it's going to be awesome to be able to work with Wilhelm. He's looking like a very strong character. And it doesn't look like he's going to be hindered by his surveyors. And the surveyors are actually going to be a very crucial part of his build. Which I'm looking forward to because the previous soldiers haven't been all that great. Axton, I love you. You were my first character, but god damn it. Sometimes your skill tree. Anyway, moving on to the rest of this skill tree. We have Kinetic Armor. Now, what Kinetic Armor is going to do is it's basically just a passive health increase, which isn't that bad. Um, you know, being making these characters tanky is a good thing, and it will also make it so attackers have a chance to be struck by an explosive feedback. 
Um, no real stats on the damage of that feedback. I don't know if it's going to be like uh, one of those damage skills that doesn't really take anything into account when scaled up. This is just one of those abilities that I, we're going to have to just see how it all plays out uh, because we have no information on this ability. So, uh, But the, we do know it's going to have maximum health, which is nice. But anyway, let's go ahead and take a look at the game changer for Saint because this thing is just absolutely insane and is just it it's it's required for a for a support a support role in a, in a team-based game so here we go overcharge when saint is summoned it will immediately release an energy wave overcharging you and your allies giving them movement speed fire rate reload speed and ammo regeneration but before we go into that look at the stats on these things 50% movement speed, 75% reload speed, 75 fire rate. This is absolutely insane increase in damage, as well as giving ammo regeneration. I don't know if that's going to affect rockets. I highly doubt it. But nonetheless, being able to give ammo regeneration to you and all of your ammo, all of your allies because plus 10 ammo regen per second even though this is only lasts for 10 seconds is going to be just an amazing buff to give to your friends and is really going to help turn turn the tide in battle if you're having a rough time versus a badass just 75 percent rate of fire even if it is only for 10 seconds that is just absolutely insane amount of rate of fire especially since you can give that to everybody now what I want to know is if this ability stacks. I can just imagine it now, four Wilhelms going up against a boss, every, all of them hitting their overcharge, and everyone getting all of this rate of fire, which like, I think that would be up to like 300% rate of fire increase if it's stacked. I highly doubt that it will. But I'm gonna be hopeful for it. I'm gonna be hopeful that maybe uh, this can this can be done. All right, so that's pretty much gonna wrap it up, guys. I've tried to tried to keep this as quick as possible and give you as much information as I can about these abilities. I hope you guys enjoyed this. Unfortunately, we did not get to see uh, Wolf's Capstone, but if I do get more information on that, I will be sure to let you guys know and inform you on if we get any more of, uh, of Saint's skill tree here, be able to see some of those missing skills. But uh, that's pretty much going to wrap it up for me, guys. Thank you for watching. As always, don't forget to rate, comment, subscribe, and keep it here for more Borderlands, the pre-sequel news. And I'll catch you guys in the next video. Later.